What's up everyone, Willy Apple here, and today Apple has released the second beta of macOS Sequoia 15.2 to developers, and a little bit later they'll hopefully release it to public beta testers. In this video I'll be showing you what is new inside the software, we've got a little bit to talk about, let's get started. So the update for me came at 3.09 gigabytes on my M1 MacBook Air, and we got quite a bit of new features in here, ones that I bet a lot of you will like a lot. Alright, so what is new here inside this latest beta? The first one has to do with a brand new menu bar widget built into macOS Sequoia. So if we were to scroll down the control center in here, I keep rearranging this so it's kind of hard to find it. And if you scroll down right here, in the menu bar only section, you're going to see a new widget right here that says weather. So if you were to click right here and click on show in menu bar, you're going to see right here that we have the weather. So these are all your locations. Clicking on this will open up the weather app. So here is the weather in Big Sur, California. And if we were to click on it, this just goes to your local location or your first one. And once again, clicking on other and opening all these will open up the weather app. Closing it, we'll just close it. Clicking on here will just give you more information directly in the weather app, which is really nice to see. And this widget's just really nice, something that I probably would just keep in my menu bar a lot. I might just put it... I haven't decided where I'm putting it quite yet, but I think I'll put it right there just to keep it nice and tucked away. Now, the next change has to do with widgets on the desktop. So if you were to right-click on a widget, it actually says the widget name now. So before, I would just say edit and then the name of the app right there. Now it's edit and then the name of the widget. So it's just really nice to see that Apple has changed that because my app has a ton of widgets inside of here and it now just says the widget name. Just really nice to see. Now, the next change has to do with iPhone mirroring. So if you were to go inside of here and, and turn on your hotspot, so basically this will disconnect you from Wi-Fi. You're now able to use your iPhone directly with your hotspot. So if you're to connect to your hotspot, it no longer has connectivity issues. So if you were to just connect to your hotspot, it no longer just boots you off of iPhone mirroring. You're now able to still use it, which is just really nice to see right here. And a much needed change that we have gotten inside of this latest beta. Now the next change inside of the latest beta of macOS Sequoia has to do with Apple Intelligence. So if we go to Apple Intelligence and scroll down to ChatGPT, you're going to notice that we got a couple of new things in here. The first one is that it actually shows your daily limit for advanced capabilities. So this is basically just Dolly 3 and GPT 4.0. So if you were to go above this limit, it will revert back to GPT 4 Mini and you won't have access to Dolly, so stay under that limit. Now the next change has to do with Siri. So we got a couple of new things here inside of Siri. So if you were to ask Siri a question that requires ChatGPT, so let's say, ask ChatGPT, what is the best iPhone that has ever released? And then if you were to press enter, we'll now say working with ChatGPT as if before I would just say working. And right here, it also says check important info for mistakes. Meanwhile, before I would say mistakes can occur, verify details. Now, the next change has to do with the mail app. We got a couple of brand new things here. So the first one is if you were to scroll up a little bit, you see that the summarize button has been modified a little bit. So it now has a little background, which is much nicer to see. And clicking on it, it does the exact same thing. And the next change has to do with this print icon. So this print icon has never showed up for me when inside an email when you double click on, on it. So now if you were to double click on an email, you can now directly print directly from the mail app. You no longer need to go inside a file print in order to print stuff now. And we also have another code change inside of macOS Sequoia and it has to do with categories. So, so before the categorization would be inside of the view option and have its own dedicated category. Now it is inside of Mailbox and it's going to have a dedicated category inside the Mailbox. And instead of it being called Categories, it's going to be called Go to Mailbox Category. And just going to go directly to, the, to every single one, which is extremely nice to see inside of here. However, at this time, mail categorization is not present inside the Mail app. So I'll still need to wait and see for that. Now the next change has to do with AirTags. We got a pretty big update when it comes to AirTags on macOS Sequoia. So if you were to go to items and then click on one of your items and then press the I for more info, we now have a new section for lost AirTag. So if you were to show contact info, whoever taps on your AirTag will see your contact info. So it's much easier to get to there. So if I were to press on continue, it knows that's with me, so I can't set that up. And I could also share item locations. So if I were to click on this, I would be able to share the item location with like a flight attendant or something. 
So if a flight attendant loses my bag, then the flight attendant can help me get my bag back, which is really nice to see. However, I can't set it up, so that is all okay. Now, next change has to do with Launchpad. When was the last time Launchpad has received an update? I don't know, but we have one update here inside of Launchpad. It has to do with notification icons. They are now much bigger than they need to be. So before they were like really tiny, now they're pretty huge. Not sure what uh, what is up about that, but they're now pretty big here inside this latest beta of Sequoia. Now, next change has to do with Image Playground. We got a couple brand new changes here. Now, the first one is that results here are a lot better. So now I can actually type Santa Claus, whereas before Santa Claus was not recognized as basic English. And this is what I got before for Santa Claus in a sleigh. It just showed me whatever this wooden plane is. Now it actually shows me Santa Claus, but now he's not in a sleigh. So kind of interesting. And overall, the results just look so much better here. And now the next change is if you were to press on this plus button, we got a couple of brand new things. So I'm just going to put some random things in here. And even while this is loading, you can see a couple of brand new changes here. The first one is that this button has now been updated to show more Apple intelligence. And now that this is loaded, you can see now we have a plus and a dislike button right here. They're all filled in, whereas before they were not. And overall, Image Playground just seems to work a lot better. So this is an astronaut in a baseball cap with fireworks. I just added some random stuff. It did a really good job here. Now, while it is still behind from like Google Gemini's AI and even Dolly, this is just a lot better than it was before. So hopefully Apple can continue catching up. And yeah, now a couple more changes with Image Playground is that it says that, that there's just one sentence here now instead of two. It just gets to the point Image Playground may create unexpected results. So good thing that we know that there. And we now have some brand new options right here. So as before, we all have to like and dislike. Of course, these have been filled in. We now have some brand new options up here. And I forget which one is new right here, but we do have a brand new option here inside this context. Now, next change has to do with wallpapers. So we got some brand new wallpapers here. So if you were to scroll down, we have all the iMac wallpapers that came out. So every single color variation is right here. However, this is the only wallpapers that we have got with the new Mac. So if you want them on your MacBook Air, there it is right there. You have an iMac on your MacBook Air. Now let's talk about RAM and storage users inside this latest beta of Mac OS Sequoia. So if we go to the settings general and then storage and let it load a little bit, we can see in total Mac OS is using 51.97 gigabytes. However, Apple intelligence gets added to the mix. So in reality, Acroist is using 46.22 gigabytes, so I'm pretty sure this is two gigabytes less than before. And RAM usage is at 4.8 gigabytes, which is a little bit less than the last beta. Still good that Apple is constantly improving it. And overall, th this version of macOS feels a lot more stable than the previous version. So I would highly recommend updating from beta 1 to beta 2. However, I do not think it's on par yet with macOS Sequoia 15.1. It might be a little bit close, but it's not on par to point quite yet. So if you want the new features, go right ahead. I see no major issues inside this latest beta overall. I just really like it. Now, thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, share this with your friends. Download my apps, Willy Widgets, and Willy Study down in the description down below. They are available in the Mac App Store. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye!